Everybody yeah, sure. Nice to <laughs> All right. So hello, everyone. Um, happy belated New Year. My name is Lana Gardner. I am a marriage and family therapist, as well as a fitness professional here in Philadelphia, if you're watching in Philly. If not, hello, hello again. I teach fitness. I do see individuals and couples. And I do a lot of work to sort of blend, um, I think, you know, have a uh, Come, come at everything from like a holistic approach. So for today, I'm presenting um, Align Your Mind. And this is really just sort of setting you up for success for, for, uh, throughout the new year when it comes to your various goals and intentions. Um, just going over some, you know, quick, actionable, you know, applicable um, tips. And if there's any questions at the end, please let me know. So I'll be more than happy to answer. So um, with this, just to get started, here we go. All right, so um, really trying to quickly go over, you know, intentions versus resolutions. I think, you know, this is the new year, you know, a lot of us set uh, resolutions and some of us set intentions and I want to be clear about the difference between the two of them. So intentions are... Um, kind of more of a broad sort of thing versus resolutions. So intentions is more so being led by a guiding principle, quality, or characteristic, right? So whether, or not, um, I'll use myself as an example throughout this presentation. Um, for me, you know, I'm kind of leaning more into intentions than more so than I am resolutions this year. Um, you know, I kind of was chatting earlier with Brittany. I had a new baby, so for me, Use, utilizing resolutions um, wouldn't be as productive for me right now uh, with rather than you know utilizing intentions. Resolutions are often very structured, hard and fast goals that are either um, achieved or broken, right? So it's it's way more structured than you know intentions. Intentions is more so like this is just kind of, kind of the guiding principle that I'm leading with for you know whatever it is that you kind of you know have a, a goal, well, not a goal, but like something that you want to focus on. Whereas a resolution is more often than aligned with a goal, very structured, and you either meet the goal or you don't meet the goal. Um, a good um, thing to consider is, you know, which one is sort of like appropriate for you, right? Like I said earlier, using myself as the example, an intention to do something. Um, so for me, an intention to be more hydrated this year, right, um, would be a little bit easier for me to kind of hold on to rather than a strict hard and fast rule about, you know, a resolution around I'm going to drink however many ounces per day. Um, you know, for me, it's I need something that's a little bit more flexible with the way that my life is right now. Whereas maybe for you, you need something that's highly structured or just has a little bit more structure and you, it's Eat more, um, it's easier for you to achieve a goal if you feel like it's very specific and, and has like a number and you know what it is that you want to meet and hit. Understanding your why behind all of this, right? You know, the, it's very important to understand your why and your purpose behind your intention or your goal or your resolution, right? Um, for me, I think it's always important to deepen the association with your intention or goal as much as possible. So for instance, um, just gonna continue on the same example that I've been using. Um, you know, for me, I'm a new mom, I'm breastfeeding, you know, I have all these various things that are kind of like going on for me. So my intention is to be a little bit more mindful about like my self care um, so that I'm able to be more present for, you know, my family and for my, my new baby girl, right? So that was kind of like deepening the association of the why, um, making sure that, you know, there's something that's gonna stick beyond possibly, you know, the goal that you have in mind or, or the intention that you have in mind, right? For some of us, you know, you know, you want to lose 10 pounds. That's, that's a, I think that's a great goal, something wrong with that. But if you're able to deepen your why and make it be something along the lines of like, I want to lose, you know, 10 pounds so that I can, you know, so that my, you know, my joints feel better, my knees feel better, and I don't have as much weight or pressure on my body, or I just feel, you know, um, more at home in my body. It, the deep, the more that you deepen your why, the more that you'll be able to kind of uh, keep it in mind and, and keep on track and, and sort of stick with it. 
Another thing that's very uh, supportive of like finding your why is also finding your word, right? So I'm a big fan of using different words uh, that really uh, can serve as the foundation of my intention or goals. So for me this year, uh, my two words have been, you know, diligent and disciplined, right? So really using, you know, the words diligent and disciplined for, for me as the example to really uh, foster a foundation of like, all right, how can I begin to ask myself, you know, questions around, you know, what does it mean to be diligent about this goal? What does it mean to be diligent about this intention? What does it mean to be disciplined? What behaviors are sort of attached to you know, being disciplined or being, you know, um, being a little bit more diligent in my life. What does that look like? What does this look like in various areas of my life? So when you're able to utilize like a word to kind of serve as the foundation, you then can begin to ask yourself, you know, more questions that can help support you in meeting your intentions or goals, right? They could also serve as a, a great foundation for creating, you know, affirmations. Um, so if I'm using the words disciplined or diligent, you know, um, I am, you know, disciplined in all that I do, right? Or um, I'm able to see things through to the very end. Um, you know, all these things are characteristics of, you know, the words that I chose for myself. But if you were to choose your own words, you can then begin to kind of flush it out a little bit more. Um, and again, deepen your association with your intention and your goal. The next part of it is ways to support and take action. Right. Um, so a lot of in uh, goals, <clears throat> excuse me, or goals that you might have for yourself um, can be based in like SMART goals. So I don't know if any of you have ever heard this before, but SMART goals is an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Right. When we create SMART goals, we create these, uh, again, a good foundation for being able to meet whatever resolutions or intentions that we might have for ourselves. So um, breaking down the SMART goals, the first word is specific. So this is creating something for yourself or a plan for yourself that's well-defined, clear, and unambiguous, right? There isn't any... Um, ambiguity around what it is that you're trying to achieve. Um, it's very clear what it is that you're trying to achieve. And I think even getting from where you are now to where it is that you would like to be in the future is pretty well defined. You know, there's a plan, there's a structure in place, um, some level of a blueprint. The next part of that is measurable, right? So being able to um, have specific criteria that uh, measures your, you know, your progress or your goals towards, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish at the end. Um, kind of tapping back into the water example, right? So if I were trying to make my water intake less of an intention and more of a more of a goal, um, my intention is to be hydrated. My goal is to drink. I'm probably going to get this wrong, Brittany. You can absolutely correct me. Um, I'm going to drink like 32 ounces of water a day. Ounces. There we go. <laughs> I was close. I was close. I did it by half, right? Um, yeah. 64 ounces, right? So my 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 goal is 64 ounces. So if I can see that my goal is 64 ounces, I can therefore say every hour on the hour. I'm going to drink, you know, from the time I wake up to, you know, 5 p.m., I'm going to drink this amount of water every every hour on the hour, right? So that's yeah. way more structured and planned out than, you know, trying to keep an intention of, you know, being more hydrated. So the next part of that is achievable, right? So being able to... Um, have the the goal be it actually be attainable now with this one i think sometimes we get a little overzealous um sometimes when we create goals for ourselves so not being so hard on yourself around um how achievable your goal is right um sometimes you might have to kind of dig into it and just kind of go on about like you know your your progress in order to be able to move the needle on whether or not this is an attainable goal for me and not impossible for you to achieve the next part of that is realistic right so your goals are within reach they're realistic and they're relevant to the purpose of your overall purpose of what it is that you're trying to do. 
So if for me, I need to have a goal of drinking 64 ounces of water, um, you know, I need to make sure that, you know, it's relevant to my overarching, you know, theme of like, I need to be hydrated so that I can be present for, you know, my, my baby because I'm breastfeeding her, <laughs> right? Um, if I'm not hydrated enough, I'm not going to be able to breastfeed her. Um, timely. So clearly defined timeline, um, including a starting date and a, uh, a starting date and a target end date, right? So the purpose of this is to create some level of urgency so that you're able to um, feel not pressured around your goal, but feel like, you know, this is something that I need to continue to involve myself in. I need to stick and remain on, on point and on focus with this. Um, something else that could really support you um, in, you know, being able to, you know, uh, see your intentions and your goals through is, again, affirmations. I had mentioned earlier, but being able to create these affirmations that can support you in your SMART goals um, using the phrase I am is extremely, impact, extremely um, impactful and powerful, and it helps us to remain in alignment with what it is that we're trying to, to, to really support us and bolster us up um, when things can get challenging throughout uh, our process. Um, I also, you know, kind of want to end here with saying like little by little with your goals until a little becomes a lot, right? So I think sometimes we like to pile on and do and try to achieve as much as we possibly can. I'm a big believer of like you do small incremental things every day and just kind of build upon them, right? Um, I like to think of goals kind of like how I think about math, right? So if you were to do math, we, we don't start learning math by starting with like algebra or something that's like really tremendously hard or difficult. Math is, is, is building blocks. You start with addition, subtraction, and you just continue to layer. It's the same thing with our goals. Little by little supporting us and building like a strong foundation. So the last part of this is really tackling setbacks. Now, you know, as we're trying to achieve, whether it be an intention, a goal, a resolution, um, a setback is going to come because not because, you know, I'm wishing for any of you to fail, but because we're human beings, right? We're humans. Um, we're probably trying to change something that we've spent a long time kind of, uh, you know, getting into like a, a certain way of doing things or a certain habit. You know, it's, it's human nature to fall short when it comes to, you know, our goals and to have some setbacks. But that doesn't mean that, you know, um, your goal isn't achievable or attainable. Um, you could kind of use this, this list to kind of see whether or not what needs to be done and how to kind of be able to um, not be so hard on yourself. So the first thing is to be kind to yourself. You know, again, you're a human being, you're not a machine. So you're going to have setbacks and setbacks really are a lot of times are a part of the process, right? It's very rare that we do anything from A to Z without having some sort of discord or, or, or conflict or issue that pops up or a setback. It's actually very normal because we are human. I'm very big on being compassionately curious. So instead of judging yourself, you can be compassionately curious when it comes to your journey in association with your goals, right? So being compassionate with yourself about falling short, not judging yourself for falling short, but instead of questioning what yourself in, in a framework of, of judgment, like, oh, why am I failing at this? Have it, take yourself out of it and actually think about it in terms of behaviors, right? So what behaviors do I need to change to better support myself? What are some of the, the things that I'm struggling with that's helping that's not helping me to achieve my goal? The more that you're able to be compassionately curious and to take and to explore what's happening in your journey without judgment, the more that you'll be able to find um, some level of an answer or a resolution to uh, whatever issue that's popping up on your journey to meet your goals. The next one here is to use the SMART goals and the questions previously to assess your actions, right? I'm very big on taking insight and turning it into action, right? So when you actually fail or when you have a setback, it's insight, it's information for you. So instead of just experiencing the setback, um, utilize it as information 
revert back to your SMART goals and also questions around, um, you know, that you had when it came to like assessing your actions to see what can be done to better, you know, support yourself or to strengthen your foundation, right? So you take all that and you assess and then you reconfigure so that you're able to um, continue to move forward and not have the setback totally knock you off your square. And that was the, and that's pretty much the, the presentation. That was great. Thank you. I have a few, you know, I wanted to chime in there, but you were, you were on a roll. Oh, sorry. Um, you should have totally interrupted me. Oh, well, it was so, it, you know, you were speaking so beautifully. I wanted to also say too, that our clients who are listening, like we use SMART goals in a different way too, like for like working out or, you know, when am I going to eat this vegetable? When am I going to go to the gym? What day, what time is this realistic? And mm -hmm. it's interesting that you, you mentioned that, you know, a lot of times what we're shooting for, for ourselves, it's not realistic now. It's not like it's never going to happen, but the goal is sometimes like extremely lofty given the circumstances in that moment. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, even, and I would say you could dare to pick a lofty goal, but I'm very into chunking. So if the lofty goal is, I'm going to say something that's like really ridiculous. I don't know, like, like lose a hundred pounds. You know what I mean? Like that's a, 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 a huge a feat. Goal. That's yeah. a lofty goal. That's a huge feat. And so instead of just focusing on the 100, you might have to break that down to how do I get past the first 20? Mm -hmm. And how do, after you get past the first 20, all right, I've hit a plateau because my body, I'm, I'm strengthening my body, right? How can I shake myself up from the plateau? Maybe I need to in incorporate new workouts. And so the more that we chunk our goals, the, the easier it is to actually kind of wake up one day and be like, wow, I'm like halfway oh, there or yeah. wow, I actually did this, which exactly. is extremely cool. I love to kind of see the process of like, you know, getting from A to Z and being like, I can't even believe that I, I got there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as far as, you know, New Year's resolutions versus intentions, it, they, they tend to be those, those bigger goals, mm -hmm. the resolutions, I should say. Um, but what I really liked, what you had mentioned was like the one word for the year. Yeah, um, I'm a big find your word person. So my my father-in-law had us do that this year. And my word was kindness. So like kindness to others, kindness to myself, the planet, like all of that kind of, kind of thing. But I wonder if anyone in the chat wants to share their word, if they can think of one for the year. Oh, that was quick. Oh, <laughs> So it's not a word, but, oh, alleviate. Oh, that's a good word. I'm curious. Alleviate. I love that. All the bad things. That's what 2021 seems to be about. <laughs> I mean, after last year, I, I would agree. Yeah, that's a good one. So Emily asked, um, can you talk a little about affirmations and how to incorporate, incorporate positive thinking? Um, yeah. into your routines? So I think um, I love utilizing the word and being able to kind of write down a list of uh, affirmations and place them everywhere that you can place them that is appropriate. So for instance, my phone background, you know, you could take a, a you could write down or type out, you know, your, um, your affirmations, put them on your phone background, um, leave, you know, things, um, your, your mirror in your bathroom, um, you know, but being able to have these um, affirmations really serve as the, the basis of like who you want to be, but tie them into action too, right? So my thing is, um, my word for this year is disciplined. So I am, you know, I am disciplined with seeing everything through, or I am disciplined with uh, showing up for, you know, myself at, you know, 6 a.m. when I have to work out, because if you can hear my baby crying, I have a baby and I, this is really the only time I get to myself now is 6 a.m. So being able to not only tie it to a characteristic, but also to actionable um, items is, is in steps is gonna be important for the affirmation, right? A, a affirmation that I love um, that actually uh, got from, 
uh, another fitness person is like, I can do hard things, right? So you can also tailor your affirmations for like times when you know that you're gonna be struggling, right? Cause I think a lot of times we, when we create goals or intentions for ourselves, we tend to tell people like, oh, well, you know, you're not gonna struggle, like just keep going. It's like, no, if you have a plan for when you're going to fall short, then you actually are, are gonna create a better foundation for yourself than you would if you hadn't. So even if you created affirmations around times where you know that you're gonna struggle with something, um, you know, that's something that could really be helpful for you. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. I think sometimes like for a lot of things, the struggle is almost built in, but we don't address that from the beginning. So when it happens, we're like, how did this happen? But like, it makes perfect sense if you think about, you know, some sort of like a, a large goal in total. Um, so that's yeah. a great, great point, you know, yeah. preparing for it ahead of time. And something that I'll also say too, is that I think we have a focus, a heavy focus on positive thinking. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but sometimes depending on where we're starting from, it might be more beneficial to have more neutral thinking than positive thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So less when you're pressure. able to have, yeah, ex ex exactly right. So it's yep. less pressure on yourself to be super positive about it, but to just be neutral about it, neutral in your thinking, neutral in the way that you speak to yourself. Um, because it's, it's sometimes it's really, it's really freaking hard to be positive all the time. Yeah. You know, and this is a therapist here. I'm telling you, it's uh -huh. hard to be positive all the time. You just <laughs> want to be, sometimes you just want to be. And the more that you take yourself out of this sort of good or bad thinking or binary and detach yourself from the binary and just allow yourself to be neutral, you have more of a willingness to be present with what it is that's in front of you. Mm. Mm, that's great. Someone in the chat says, great, great tip, be neutral. And that's okay too, being neutral. I think sometimes the negative connotation is put on anything but positive but there's so Absolutely. many things that we can feel and all of them are perfectly okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. So I, does anyone else have questions? Um, I'll wait for a quick second too. We also have a word. Uh, Emily tried care last year as her year, word for the That's year. That's a good one. Caring That's for yourself, one. caring for other people. Yeah. Um, if no one has questions, um, oh, we have someone. You're welcome, you Emily. <laughs> tips. I also, I have one question before yes. we kind of sign off. Do you have any recommended readings for, you know, anyone listening in or like books about this type of, you know, creating maybe your why or something like that, that you recommend? So there's actually, I mean, it's not so much about the why, but more so about like, I think supporting yourself when you're trying to get deep into the work that you're trying to do. There is a great, um, what is his name? Cal Newport. Okay. So he has a great podcast called Deep, oh, I, I'm, I'm messing it up, but I'm, I was like, is it Deep Thoughts? Deep Thinking? Um, but his name is Cal Newport. I'll see if I could type his name in here. Cal New Deep Work is a great book. Is one of his great books, but he now has a podcast. So he j literally just started it. Um, and I, he has like a lot of great tips on how to meet your goals, how to not get sidetracked by um, like social media or like your cell phone, how to utilize your time when you have a baby, yeah. <laughs> like all these different things. Cause he has like, I think four kids. So um, I've been binging his podcast and it's really good. A lot of applicable Ooh. items there. I'm very big on like, you know, how can I apply these things? He has, his podcast is quick. It's, I think it's only like 30 minutes. If that, it's really good. I would say check awesome. out his podcast. Okay. And it, we've yes, confirmed deep it's questions deep questions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Check it out. It's a great binge kind of like, you know, sort of podcast while you brush your teeth and do all your morning it's, it's stuff. a great podcast to start your day with I will agree with awesome. that cool so 
that's that's awesome. I'm I'm actually going to listen to that myself. So I want to thank you for coming and speaking with us tonight, and everyone in the chat saying thank you. You're oh, welcome. Thank great. you for your time and your attention. I appreciate it. Hopefully, sure. some of these things are helpful to you. And I would love to hear. I'd love to hear from Brittany about how you know people are kind of checking in with their intentions and goals. Yes, I'll have. You know, we'll have uh, your contact information available to people through your website. Um, and you guys can always ask me. Um, but yes, this is very refreshing. Perfect for the time of year, too. Because like mid-January, we're all just like, I don't know. I yeah, don't know some of us have going. already thrown the resolutions out the window. Exactly. <laughs> and, that's, and that's okay, too. <laughs> just this yes. re re reconfigure, reassess. Exactly. Align your mind. There you yes. go. Yes. <laughs> so have a great night, everybody. Alana, it was great Thank to meet you. you. And, uh, have a great one, everyone. Be in touch. Bye, everybody. Bye.